I hope that everybody's doing well. I hope that you're ready to see me rank literally every game that I can think of. Uh, mobile games, to browser games, to console games, just about everything that I could think of. So that we can, you know, fairly rank everything. Honestly, I expected there to be more considering I included mobile games and stuff, but eh, whatever. Let's see, Minecraft. Okay, so like, this is Minecraft Java Edition. Well, let's get this straight. This is Minecraft Java Edition right here. Because as you can see, this is Minecraft Pocket Edition. But yeah, Java Edition, it's pretty good. But does it deserve S rank? I like Minecraft. If you haven't seen my name, Crafter, Crafter B, uh, I like Minecraft. But like, has it still remained to be my favorite game? I don't think so, but it's still very good. Does it deserve S rank? I'll give Minecraft Java Edition S rank. Yeah. Honestly, Pac-Man's like pretty cool as a game. Like the fact that this is one of the earlier games for just like any example you can think of. It's cool that Pac-Man was one of the first. I think Pac-Man should go to B. It's like a pretty awesome game when you think about it. Pocket Edition Minecraft was so cool. I think I think Pocket Edition needs to get A. At the very least. Minecraft Pocket Edition? Back when I played Pocket Edition? That was back when the Nether Reactor was a thing. It was it was fun. And this game, it doesn't have a title on it, but this is one that I have played a fair bit before on my DSi. And you cannot get this game anymore. I don't know why, but it's just, it's just like gone from existence. Obviously, like the eShop and everything closed down, but even before that, like this, this used to be a mobile game. This used to be a game that you could get on phones and it's called Xenonia. It's like an entire RPG. And for being a mobile RPG, it was so good. Like, I'm glad that I had experienced this game, even though it's not the best RPG. It's still pretty fun. There's an entire Xenonia franchise. It's not that big, but like... I think there's a Xenonia 5? Let's put Xenonia at B tier for now. Because like... It was good. Not perfect. But like... I like that kind of RPG a lot. It was like... You had some basic classes. You had equipment that was like, level locked, you had to do fetch quests and stuff. It was 2D because it was on the DSi. It was pretty fun. Oh, now we got a good one. Like, a, a really definitively good one that's, like, not too definitive because there's plenty of people that don't like it, but Super Smash Bros. Brawl? Brawl gets S tier. And then Wii Music. Where do I even put Wii Music? Like, I... I'm stuck between putting Wii Music at C or B tier, because it's just kind of like... It was very fun, but for a very short amount of time. And I didn't do everything in it, I mean. But it's not, it's, it's, it's not like perfect. C is like, C is average, you know? C is a very average score to give a game. Star Wars The Force Awakens for the Wii, because that's the version that I had. Uh, I remember this being pretty fun. I think that I would rank it at the same place that I rank Xenonia and Pac-Man, though, in all fairness. Like, you did cool stuff with the Force. You swung around the Wiimote for your, your, the uh, lightsaber. And you could customize the lightsaber, I think. But also, it was just like, it was just a pretty alright game. Pretty good. Yo, Pokemon X? X in particular? An, an incredible Pokemon game. X is like so good. I think that I have to put X in S. This is one of my favorite Pokemon games ever. It had Mega Blaziken, it had Xerneas, the fairy type. 
the first 3D Pokemon game. I really like Gen 6. I, I think that X... Pokemon X should go in S, and Pokemon Y should go in A. You know? Like, why Veltal's cool, but honestly, for some reason I think Xerneas is just cooler than why Veltal. I think Guitar Hero 2 is better than 1. So yeah, I'll put it in... I'll put Guitar Hero 1 in B tier. It's like an alright game. It's Guitar Hero. Pokemon Sapphire version. Yeah, that goes in S. Gen 3 Pokemon. Gen 3 Pokemon was just really good. I don't think that they had the the physical special split yet. But it's Pokemon, so you can, like, still play the game just fine. What game is this? Oh, Final Fantasy Tactics? Yo, I love this game. This game is really good, honestly. Like, I would do a second playthrough of Final Fantasy Tactics just just to do it. Just like on stream and stuff. I like Final Fantasy Tactics. Angry Birds Seasons. Honestly, as far as Angry Birds games go, Seasons was like the most mid Angry Birds game. And I I will stand by that by that decision. Pokemon Y2. Eh, C. <laughs> uh, Pokemon Red. D. <laughs> like, it, it was cool and all, but I don't like the sprites. I don't like the lack of color. I don't like how glitchy it is. I don't like the whole, uh, special stat thing. And I don't really like much about it. I don't even think that you could run in, in Gen 1. Oh, Dragon Ball Fusions? This is like one of the coolest Dragon Ball games ever. Unlike a lot of other Dragon Ball games, this one is not a fighter. This is not a 2D fighter, this is not a 3D fighter. This is like a turn-based RPG. And it's not a traditional one either, because there is an arena where you have to move the characters around and stuff. It's pretty cool, and as the name implies, there are so many fusions in this game. You have, uh, you know, Gogeta, Vegito. I think there was Vegito EX because there's a special type of fusion in this game called EX fusions, which don't have a time limit on them or anything. And then there were five-way fusions, which are pretty fun. And of course, you could pick your your race in this game. I don't remember how many there were. I only ever played as human or Saiyan. I usually played as human, I think. But uh, my favorite character to fuse with was Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, because it looked really cool. Dragon Ball Fusions, I think, deserves S tier. It's a good game. It's an incredibly underrated game that not many people have... Not enough people have heard of. I don't want to say not many, but not enough people have heard of it. I have played two Mario Kart games, being DS and Wii. And this is my lesser of the two, but it's really good still. It's Mario Kart DS, no one can be upset with it. I think Mario Kart DS deserves B rank. Okay, which Beyblade game is this? Because uh, depending on which Beyblade game this is, that really matters. But if it's Metal Fusion, I kind of have to rank it at D. Because <laughs> Metal Fusion, compared to Metal Masters, that game sucked. <laughs> Metal Masters was great, but Metal Fusion was bad. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles The Crystal Bearers. The concept of the game was really fun. I remember it being really fun. But oh gosh, it controlled horribly when I replayed it. I think I gotta put it in C tier, because I remember it being so good, and there are elements that are really cool, but the game just does not hold up. Guilty Gear, specifically uh, XX Accent Core. Uh, yeah, I like it. It's the first Guilty Gear game to have Bridget in it, and it's really fun to, like, learn how to play the game. I think that it deserves A tier. 
And speaking of A tier, Minecraft Xbox 360 edition? I love this. I I replayed it recently. I like Minecraft. I like Minecraft Xbox 360 edition a lot too because well, Pocket Edition was my first ever version of Minecraft. Xbox 360 edition was clearly the more Minecraft game com compared to Pocket Edition. It was like a whole different world playing Xbox 360 edition. Hollow Knight. Uh So I still have not beaten Hollow Knight. Very difficult game. I have it for the Switch. I think the Switch version is worse than PC version, supposedly. I don't know, I just, like, I'll rank it at C. I, I just can't bring myself to ever pick up the game again, so I can't really... I can't really justify ranking it higher because I refuse to play it. <laughs> I know that Soul Silver definitely deserves to be ranked highly, because, like, it's Soul Silver. There's everything that you could want in this game. Like it it's a Gen 4 game. It had the Pokey Walker. Uh it looked amazing. There were a bunch of Pokemon in it since it was a Gen 4 game. It had the really cool post game with red in it. It of course improved upon the original Gen 2 games a lot. The Pokey Walker is a really big thing for me. And then there was like the berry juice and the also the berry planter that you could carry with you. I really remember that being fun. And uh Yeah, this the game just really looked good. That's a big thing about it. I think it should get A. Anyways, the legendary Starfy. You see I would rank this at A. But honestly, the mini games were like my favorite part of it. <laughs> uh, Nino Kuni. Never beat this game. I bought the Switch version. I still need to beat that. I'll do it one day, probably. I think I'll give it an A. Nino Kuni is a very, very pretty game because, like, all of the all of the cutscenes in this game were done by Studio Studio Ghibli. Ghibli, whichever, and they are known as one of the best animation studios in the world. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Yeah, I, I like Ultimate. Ultimate deserves S tier, honestly. Honestly, I probably put more hours into Super Smash Bros. 4, but that is mainly because I had it for 3DS, and I was able to take that to school. I have never wanted to take my Switch to school. Uh, Scarlet. Pokemon Scarlet. You can go into A. Yokai Watch 2. The new Yokai that were introduced were pretty cool. But everything that they kind of like retroactively changed, which I don't think very much was changed, it just kind of felt like meh, whatever. Like the the fleshy and the bony yokai thing, that was kind of lame. I don't remember a single thing about that. So I'll, I'll put it in like C. <laughs> Fire Emblem Echoes. D. I hated that game. <laughs> I enjoyed I enjoyed like the middle sections kind of. But, like, when I got to the end of Fire Emblem Echoes, I got softlocked. <laughs> I don't know if I'm actually softlocked, but, like, I cannot beat the final boss. Because, uh, to kill the final boss in Fire Emblem Echoes, spoiler alert, you need to use one of the two main characters and a special weapon. The weapon's not, like, super duper strong or anything. And, uh... My characters were underleveled because it's a strategy game. If your main character ever went down, you automatically lost a fight. So I usually kept them around the back as to prevent that from happening. And thus they became underleveled. And I saved, like, I saved at a point that right before the final boss. 
So now if I ever want to go back, I have to fight the final boss. <laughs> but I can't do that because my characters are underleveled. Bakugan Battle Brawlers for the DS. This game was awesome. I really like it. Uh, let's give it A rank, honestly. And while I am ranking Bakugan Battle Brawlers for the DS, let's also rank Bakugan Battle Brawlers for the PlayStation 2 because I have both of those games. They are the same thing except they control differently, obviously. And I like the controls for the PlayStation 2 version less. Metopia 3DS is awesome. It has advantages and disadvantages over Switch, and of course it is missing some of those advantages now because uh, 3DS support is just dead. The fact that it that it assigned Miis that were good for a role, I really like that feature because it was surprising, and it's better than using. It's way better than using default Miis. I really like that. I think that I will put it in A tier. Anyways, Beyblade Metal Masters, way better than Metal Fusion. This was like just a straight up fighting game with Beyblades. Like you play as the Beyblade in a fighting game arena. It is so funny and also really sick. Uh, Super Smash Bros. 3DS, A tier. Miitopia for the Switch, S rank. Obviously Miitopia was going to get ranked at S. One of the two versions, at least. W what do I rank Sonic Colors at? C? Maybe a high C? Because, like, it's obviously... It's obviously a, a game that had effort in it. It's not just, like, some kind of cash grab. But it didn't end up to be that awesome of a game. Also, I don't like platformers that much. But as far as Sonic Colors goes in terms of platforming, it doesn't have any annoying void out spots, except in the 3D segments. So like that, that's fun. We play. See, had some pretty fun mini games, but I don't know if it's the kind of game that I really want to pick up that often. Spore Hero. This is going to be the first F tier. I am kind of happy that I played Spore Hero, but I cannot justify ranking it any higher than F, because it is just... not a good game. It is not well made. It doesn't have a good story. The graphics are whatever. Uh, the controls are... also not that great. <laughs> Funny enough, Bug Fables is the first traditional Paper Mario game that I've played, because before that I have only played uh, Super Paper Mario, and like technically Sticker Star, but I, I didn't get very far in Sticker Star. I couldn't... I didn't want to play Sticker Star anymore. It sucked. <laughs> Bug Fables is awesome though. I still haven't done the post game. I should. I think Among Us rightfully gets A tier. Because you can both play it on desktop as a paid game, or you can play it on your phone for free. And it's just like a really good party game. And it works long distance too. It's really good. Among Us. For as much as you can joke about Among Us, it is a genuinely good game. Original Angry Birds is like peak mobile gaming. I wish that they did not get rid of it. Cause like, they still have like, what's it's called? I think it's called Red's First Flight now? Red's First Flight, which is like a bundle, a paid bundle. But I think that it, I think that Red's First Flight is actually more glitchy than the original Angry Birds was. So like, they should never have gotten rid of the first one. They just didn't want to support the game anymore for new mobile versions, I guess, but... It's Angry Birds. How much work could it have been? Angry Birds Space. <laughs> S tier. It's Angry Birds Space. Who would not put Angry Birds Space in S tier? 
Animal Crossing Wild World. Uh, like, it's pretty good. In terms of a portable Animal Crossing game, aside from New Horizons, which I have not played, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I think that it was basically just, like, the N64 version, or maybe I'm thinking of GameCube. I think it was basically the same thing as that. I think I have to put it at C. Because, like... It's just not... It's a good game, but it's missing a lot of quality of life features from what I remember. You know? Here's a game that I'm sure... Uh, some of you are questioning what it is when you look at this image. Uh... This is an annoying orange game. An annoying orange mobile game called, uh, Kitchen Carnage, I think? Where it's basically like, uh, Launch the Turtle or whatever. One of those kind of games. It really took the fact that it is an annoying orange game and used that to its advantage because, uh, like, they just have a bunch of annoying orange lines that play whenever you lose. And I think, I think that's a good, a good use of the Annoying Orange brand. Also, did you know that the person who made Annoying Orange is trans now? Ape Escape Pumped and Primed? That's easily an A-tier game. Cause like, there's, there's problems. It's a PlayStation 2 game. But honestly, there is so much good about the game. And like... The things that I say are problems from it being a PlayStation 2 game. While it is a problem in some areas, in others, it's actually really good. Because, like, there's this one boat mini game where you have to use both of the both of the joysticks and turn them in opposite directions to go forward. And also, since they each control a paddle, if you're not spinning them at the same speed, you will slowly drift off towards another direction. But, uh, it's also used to control, like, you use the right, the right joystick to control something that's called, like, a, a dragonfly, I think, which lets you hover. And you can also use the left joystick to move around while you're doing it, of course. And that just makes for really good gameplay that a lot of games don't have anymore because we always assign the right the right joystick is like always this one thing like move the camera around and stuff. There's problems there obviously, but the controls are just like really interactive and very fun. This is Bloons TD Battles 1. And honestly, Bloons TD Battles is such a cool game, and I like one more than I like two. Oh, and speaking of Bloons games, here's Bloons Tower Defense... 3? Yeah, I'll put it in B tier. Cause like, I always just played it in on cool math games. I'm sure that you all know... Actually, never mind. Uh, I doubt that you all know what cool math games is. But yeah, that's how I always played it. Stick Fight the Game? This is a really good game, but you need to actually get a good lobby to enjoy this game. Or like, you know, play it with friends. It's a cheap game, so it's not, like, unimaginable that you and your friends could all get it. But like, probably not happening. I'll put in B tier for that, but like, there's a shield mechanic where you get like a small shield that can deflect projectiles and stuff. It's really cool. And then you can just like, you can just as easily punch someone to death as you can like get a black hole gun. <laughs> Yo, Titanfall 2. This is like my favorite first person shooter. I think I have to put it in A tier because like, I do not particularly love first person shooters. And I think some of the weapon balancing might have been a little bit funny in this game. But, for one, you get giant robots. That's pretty cool. And then you also get superpowers, like 
And not all of them are quite super, but you get like grapple hooks and visibility and stuff. It's really fun. Anyways, tabletop simulator. I think that I kind of have to rank this. <laughs> Do I rank that at A or S? Because like... The thing about Tabletop Simulator is that there's, like, every board game that you could think of in it. <laughs> Which is pretty cool. But I don't know how many of them are, like, super awesome. Plus, actually, it's like... It's like $15 for this game, and everybody who wants to play needs to own it, so... <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is kind of a good game. It's not good, but as far as a mobile gacha game goes, Raid Shadow Legends is probably one of the best ones. I'll put it at B tier. Blazing Beaks. I don't know if I want to put this in C tier or D tier, because like this is just a game that I randomly bought for the Switch. And it's not that great, like... If I saw Binding of Isaac for the same price, I would much rather have had the Binding of Isaac. Or like, Enter the Gungeon. Blazing Beaks is... It's just not that great. Because like, the main mechanic is that you have to use like, artifacts or whatever... ...to, uh, get loot. And you have to carry those artifacts until you find a place to deposit the loot. But since this is a roguelike, uh, you might not find a place to deposit the artifacts. And also, all of the artifacts have a debuff with them. So, if you pick them up, it'll be something like, Every time you dash, a bomb will spawn where you were. Uh, I think that I'll put Blazing Beaks in D tier. Valkyria Chronicles. Yeah, I'll put that in A tier. Valkyria Chronicles is awesome! Yo, Super Auto Pets. C. Originally, I would have ranked Super Auto Pets at B, maybe even A rank. But the game just... I'm going to be very blunt about it. The game fell off so hard from all the updates that they keep doing. They keep making the game just so much more boring. <laughs> oh, this is a really, really good mobile game. Like, if you were to play any mobile game that I'm reviewing here on stream, uh, Clash Arena Turbo Stars would be a very good one to pick. Otherwise known as Cats, where you play as a cat operating a giant, uh, basically battle bot. <laughs> It's a 2D game, and you just- you build the bot, and then it auto-plays for you by just driving straight forward, that's all it does. I have nothing against Cave Story, but I will be putting it in B tier. It is a shame to put Cave Story on the same level as Raid Shadow Legends, because, like, the story and everything... It's really good, the fact that this was, like, a really early on game. Uh, I think that the original might have been free. And this was, uh... This was one of the first indie games that have ever really hit it big. But honestly, it's just not my kind of game. I don't even know what genre Cave Story really is supposed to be. It feels like maybe... It feels like maybe Cave Story's a Metroidvania? I don't really know. Celeste is a 10 out of 10 game, and I hate it. <laughs> that is- that is my thoughts on Celeste, so I don't know how to rank this because, like... Objectively, Celeste is an incredible game, but personally, I hate it. <laughs> I'll just put it Celeste at B tier. Now, this is a game that I'm sure nobody remembers, and it's called Boom Beach. It's made by the same people as Clash Royale and Clash of Clans, as you can tell from the picture, I'm sure. 
I don't even really remember the gameplay that much. I kind of do. And it's not that good. It's not as good as Clash of Clans. I'll put it in D tier, honestly. I think Clash Royale can easily go to B tier, if not higher, because Clash Royale is a good game. It's a good card game, even if it's like barely card, card related. It's like, if you took a strategy game and you streamlined it down and condensed it as much as you possibly can. Animal Crossing City Folk? I like Animal Crossing City Folk, A tier. Civ 6 is a really good game. It deserves to be up here. Because, like, how many other games can I play as the Spanish Inquisition and tell my friends whenever, whenever I go to start a war with them, you never expected the Spanish Inquisition? World of Jumpstart. C. Easily C. I played it within a year, I think. Before the game was permanently shut down. I'm surprised that it was still up because this is a game from, like, the early 2000s. Just an early 2000s web game. I guess it's kind of like Roblox, except uh, it's not, like, player-made. It's only a select amount of things that was made by the people who make Jumpstart games. I'll rank Call of Duty Black Ops at C. I think that it's overrated. But Call of Duty Finest Hour... I remember the campaign for this being pretty fun. I'll put it at B. It was on the PlayStation 2. I remember playing the campaign, you know. It's like... a World War II simulator, as Call of Duty originally was, before it became about... magic? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Z-Girls 3. F tier. I made a video about this a while ago. Anyways, Cult of the Lamb, this is a really good roguelike, and it has the city-building elements. Both of those things are good. Both the city-building and stuff, and the roguelike stuff, they are both good. But I don't know if they go together as well as... as well as it's supposed to. Ooh, speaking of good games, this is Dissidia. If you don't know what Dissidia is, it is a Final Fantasy fighting game. And it's it's a 3D fighter. It's kind of like Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Uh, speaking of which, Dr Dragon Ball Xenoverse and Xenoverse 2 are next on the list. But uh, yeah, that's basically what Dissidia is. There's no like, customization and stuff for your own character. You have to play as, like, other characters from the franchise. It let me play as my favorite character, Titus. And also, uh, you can play as some of the villains, like... Uh, I think you could play as Kefka, Sephiroth, Jekt. The city is good. I'm gonna rate Xenoverse before I rate Xenoverse 2. Uh, Xenoverse. B tier. Xenoverse is a good game. It's it's just a good game. I never played like Budokai, Tenkaichi or whatever. So I I don't understand people who say that's better because I never played the game. But Xenoverse was really cool. Especially because you did get to customize your own character and stuff. And like pretty much all the moves are viable for story mode. And then you get, like, transformations and stuff. That's cool. I do think that Xenoverse handled transformations worse than Dragon Block C, the Minecraft mod. Xenoverse 2, it does have the same problem I said before about Xenoverse 1 with the whole transformation thing. But it does add a lot more. Not that much more. But the main thing it added was battle figures, and that is the best minigame ever. Dragon Quest Swords. This is the only Dragon Quest game that I have ever played, and it's very different from the other ones because it is a Wii game. It is a game on the Wii that uses motion controls, and it's basically like 
an on-rails exploring game where you have to actually do combat, kind of like in Skyward Sword, where it's like vertical slash, horizontal, diagonal, uh, thrust, and you also had a shield and stuff. There were teammates that could do magic, too. And yeah, it was pretty fun. I, I like it. I haven't played it in a long time, and I really want to play it again. I think that it should probably go to B tier. I'm almost certain that it won't be as good as I remember, which is why I don't want to put it in A tier. But it's a good game. Drawn to life. For those of you who don't know, uh, this is the game where... Uh, uh, it, it has a cutscene with a car crash. A very traumatic car crash. <laughs> gameplay is pretty good. Honestly though, gameplay wise, I, I do have to put it in B tier. Bluin's Tower Defense 2? Where did I rank? 1. Yeah, I'll put this at... I'll put this at C. Skyrim. Skyrim's an A tier. Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky? S rank. Easily S rank. I love Explorers of Sky. Ooh, Fable 3. This is the Fable game where you get a gun. And I think that you also have magic gloves? Or maybe that was Fable 2? Uh, I remember this being a good game. Both fails. I think that I'll put 3 in A tier. And 2 in B tier. Because I... I'm pretty sure 3 is the one that had magic gloves. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. <laughs> well guys, uh... I'll put it in B tier. Fallout 4. B tier. I didn't like it as much as Skyrim. Farmville is kind of awesome. Like, Farmville is kind of awesome. <laughs> I'll put Farmville at B. Alright, Fire Emblem Fates Birthright. My favorite Fire Emblem game. Unironically, I think that it's way better than Echoes, and also better than Three Houses. I like Fire Emblem Fates. I'll put it in A. No. I, I, I don't think I can put it at S, but it's a really good game. I'm putting it in an S. I like Fire Emblem Fates. Final Fantasy X. A tier. There's obviously there's obviously problems with it, like the grid sphere system is kinda kinda wacky. Uh Food Fantasy. This one is also a mobile game. It's basically like one of those restaurant simulator mobile games but also mixed with a JRPG, and there's a bunch of food-themed anime people. Anime... anime men and women. Honestly, I, I think I'll put it in B tier. I gotta put Fossil Fighters Champions at S tier. Like, if there was any game that was going to compete with Pokemon, it was going to be Fossil Fighters. It's such a good game. I never played the game that came before or the game that came after, but Champions is so good. It's it's not like Pokemon, really. You have three dinosaurs out at once, and instead of catching, catching them, you have to, like, excavate them, which is really fun. I love the, I love the fossil hunting aspect of it, and the story is pretty good. There's a lot of good dinosaurs. And around the point that you beat the game, you unlock bone dinosaurs. Those are awesome. If you had to make a list, it would be so hard for you not to put everything in A or B. Yeah. I have like two things in F tier. These games are just objectively bad. Oh hey, here's another F tier actually. Uh, Garfield Fun Fest. That game was horrible. It's a DS game. And, like, there are good Garfield DS games, which is why, when you look up Garfield for the DS, this is not the first game to come up. <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't have included Gears of War 3 on this list because I barely remember it. Even though it was one of the first games I ever played, uh, definitely shouldn't have. I think it's rated, like, M for Mature. <laughs> and, uh, I was probably, like, 4. 
I just remember having a gun with a chainsaw at the end of it. Uh, yeah, I'll put it at B tier. Genshin Impact. Do I put Genshin at A or B? Because, <laughs> like... Uh, the same argument I made for Raid Shadow Legends, as far as gacha games go, it is an incredibly good one. I just got so lost in the game at some point, probably because I just stopped playing it for a while, and now I just have no direction on what to do. I don't know. I'll put it at B tier. GTA 5? GTA 5 can go into B tier too. But San Andreas? Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is way better than 5. There are so many... There are so many more things that you can do in this one. Because, like, for one, there's all the fun cheat codes and stuff, like... You can get your jetpack, your flying cars, and whatnot. And then... Uh, you can... You can recruit gang members. You can go work out and stuff. Guitar Hero 1! I'll just put it at C tier. It's like, average game. Harvest Moon for the Game Boy. Uh... I really liked playing it, but also... I was very young, and uh... I had no idea what to do. I don't think the game told you very much how to do things. I'll put it at, I'll put it at C tier. Harvest Moon Game Boy. Enter the Gungeon. Yeah, Enter the Gungeon deserves A. Enter the Gungeon's a really good roguelike. Pokemon Unite. This is my favorite MOBA. It's the only MOBA I've really played. <laughs> uh... Do I care that much for this genre of game? Not in particular. Have I played this game that often recently? Not really. But it is a free game. They keep adding more Pokémon to it. And it is my favorite of the genre. And like, I feel like it's a really good example of the genre. I think I'll put it at A. Angry Birds Star Wars. S. Wobbly Life can go to B tier. The game is still in like, early access, I think. So, there's just not that much to do. Although there has been an update or two since I've last played. I don't know what's in them, really. Except for one of them's called, like, the Sewers Update. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Dungeon Dice Monsters. This is a spin-off of Yu-Gi-Oh! That was actually part of the anime. And, uh... I don't remember the rules, but I remember it being pretty fun. I will put... Dungeon Dice Monsters. I will put it at B tier. I'll put Dungeon Dice Monsters at B tier. Terraria. Definitely a good use of your money if you want to get Terraria. But I've never played it for that long. Unless it was like couch co op. Switch Sports. Like, the sports and stuff are pretty... They work. That, that's all I can say about them. They work. <laughs> Infamous. Uh, Infamous 1 gets B tier. Second Son. B tier. Jumpstars Victory vs. Plus. That's easily A tier. It's a great game. Clash of Clans... B tier. Yes, I am putting Clash of Clans on the same level as Infamous Second Son, but honestly, Infamous 1 deserves much better. I'm not going to put it at the top of the list. Kingdom Hearts. Wait, which Kingdom Hearts is this? I think this is Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories. Uh... Yeah, I liked Rechain of Memories, I think. The gameplay was fun enough. I like... I like card games. Cards always make things fun. I'll put it at... I'll put it at B tier. Kirby 64, Kirby and the Crystal Shards. A tier. Kirby, uh... Of... Uh, what was it called again? Uh... 
Kirby and the Forgotten Land, A tier. Kirby's Epic Yarn. I'll put it a high B tier. High B tier. Uh, Kirby Superstar Ultra. A tier. Kirby... Kirby games are just good. Uh, Zelda Ocarina of Time 3DS Edition. C. I consider it the same... the same level as Switch Sports. <laughs> I don't like Ocarina of Time. <laughs> 3DS version, uh, I have never played the original Ocarina of Time, but in terms of the game working and obviously looking way better, uh, it is better than the original. I just don't care for Ocarina of Time itself. <laughs> Lego Batman for the PlayStation 2. B tier. Yeah, Magikarp Jump can be B tier. It's a pretty good mobile game. I like Magikarp Jump. Super Mario 64 DS. It's kind of the same problem as... The same problem as Ocarina of Time. I don't like Mario 64, but Mario 64 DS is better. Except when it comes to throwing Bowser at the bombs, I think. Because it's basically impossible to do, to do the final fight. <laughs> For me, at least. And I was playing on 3DS. Super Mario Odyssey. I like Mario Odyssey. A tier. Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story? Get that all the way straight up to S tier. This is... This is such a good RPG. Mario Kart Wii. S tier. Mega Man Battle Network? B tier. I do kind of like the gameplay. But you know, I never... I never spent too much time on it. Oh, here we are, Pocket Edition Lite. I did include them separately. Okay, Pocket Edition Lite. You can go to A tier. Minecraft Legends. F tier. Minecraft Story Mode. A tier. I actually liked Minecraft Story Mode. Uh, Monster Hunter... I think that's Freedom Unite. For the PSP. Whichever Monster Hunter was on PSP. I liked it. Uh, I'd give it an A. I like Monster Hunter. I like Monster Hunter in general. Pretty good. And speaking of Monster Hunter World, yeah, you can go to A too. They're about the same quality. Like, gameplay-wise, they are the same quality, I think. Except, like, uh, Monster Hunter World has bug lances and some other stuff, I think. But it's a Monster Hunter game. We all know what the game loop is. You start off with some basic tools. You fight monsters, you upgrade the tools. Then you fight another monster. You upgrade your tools. <laughs> and so on and so forth. How many games do I have? Oh, I have a lot of games left still. <laughs> Infamous 2, you can go to A rank. You're better than Infamous 1. Pokemon Fire Red. Infinitely better than Pokemon Red. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll put it at... No, A feels too high, because I, I just don't... It basically fixes all my problems with Pokemon... Pokemon Red. But there's still no physical special split, and it's still... Still pretty basic in terms of a Pokemon game. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, my only experience with Gen 4, and it is a Gen 8 game. C, C, I didn't like it that much. Death Road to Canada. Death Road to Canada is a good game, I think it gets A tier. It's a, uh, it's basically a roguelike, not even basically, it, it is a roguelike. It's very different from most roguelikes, I would say. I don't know, it's like... Interesting, because like... You make your characters, you can make as many characters as you want, and those characters will also like, inhabit the world. You can find them around and stuff. There's lots of good game modes that are... Some of them are silly. Like, I think there's an all-pets game mode, so that's fun. I like Death Road to Canada. Yeah, Deltarune goes to A. 
I like Deltarune. Who doesn't like Deltarune? Piku Niku. I guess B tier. It it was it was a fun game, but it didn't have much substance to it. <laughs> Naruto Uzumaki Chronicles for the PlayStation 2. Uh I should honestly like replay this at some point. Cause I never beat it. It's like a chip system, I think that's what they were actually called. Where you get like a a special pattern to fill in, then you put in chips and those determine your abilities and stuff. That kind of game. Neat Girl Date Night. That goes to S tier. I really like this game. It is simply... It is a simple visual novel. But I really liked it. I, I really liked the character. Terratech. Honestly, I guess B tier. It, it's hard to rank Terratech. I don't know. New Zealand Story. I did not- I don't enjoy playing this game, but the fact this game exists makes me happy. <laughs> Cause it's a game about a kiwi, a kiwi with shoes and stuff, and a bow and arrow. And the game- the game is just called New Zealand Story. As if this is just what New Zealand is like. Nino Kuni 2. I played more, more of this recently than I have Nino Kuni 1. I think that I have to put in A tier because uh, it's an RPG with, uh, you know, city management and stuff, kingdom management. It's more fluid than Nino Kuni 1, like actually doing the combat and stuff. Uh, Oxygen not included, A tier. I like Oxygen not included. It's a really good, uh, really good civilization game. You get to automate stuff, and it's cool. Sticker Star, F tier. I never want to play a game where I have to buy my attacks. Uh, Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time. It's the same thing as Explorers of Sky, but less content. Pokemon Black. I like it less than Pokemon... Uh, I like it less than the sequels. D tier. Legends Arceus. You... Do I give it S tier? I'm not usually picky about graphics. But the graphics in Legends Arceus do have severe problems. Specifically, like, the water. Uh, I'll put it at A. Uh, Pokemon Rangers Shadows of... Almia, I think. I'm sure that the story was good. I don't remember it, because I was a child. Uh, but the gameplay was drawing circles. Uh, Rescue Team DX. You also get a C. You know what, no, I'll put you at B. I'll put you at B. Nowhere near as good as the other Mystery Dungeon games. I, I, I kind of just dropped this game. <laughs> Rocket League's fun, fun enough. I'll put you at B. Peggle Dual Shot. If, if I had this game, like, just on my DS and stuff, that would be amazing. But just playing it, it's, it's, it's like a C tier. If I could just bring around Peggle with me wherever I go, I can imagine that actually being super fun. Salt and Sanctuary. This is the only Souls-like game I've ever played, and it's really good. Like... There's- it's a 2D game, and you have- I don't remember if there was magic. There were like enchants and stuff, and also a chain sword. That was cool. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. <sighs> B tier, because I don't remember the gameplay being that awesome. Scribble Knots Unmasked. Incredible game. A tier. Sims 4. Yeah, I'll put you at A tier, why not? It's The Sims. I like Sims games. Skylander Spyro's Adventure. Uh... F B tier. It's like Skylander's Giants. 
it has more Skylanders that I like than Spyro's Adventure does. So I'll just put that at A tier. I don't feel like putting it any higher. It, it's like a low A tier. Original Super Mario Bros. D tier. I hate platformers like this. <laughs> Sonic. Sonic 1. C tier. Do I want to put this at C tier or D tier? I'll put it at C tier. It's a better platformer than Mario. Super Mario Bros. Uh, Sonic 2. B tier. Sonic Rush Adventure. Also B tier. However... Sonic 06. Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. A tier. This is an awesome game. I like Sonic 06. <laughs> Spelunky 2. You can have A tier. You're a good game. I don't play Spelunky 2 that often, but it is a good game. SpongeBob Drawn to Life DS. SpongeBob Drawn to Life DS gets an A tier. It's better than Drawn to Life the next chapter. In terms of gameplay. And I also really like the aesthetic. Uh, but Drawn to Life the next chapter does have a better story, because this one... It's literally SpongeBob versus DoodleBob. Uh, SpongeBob Operation Krabby Patty. I do have the disc for this still. I played it. It's not that good. <laughs> like, I think I think that's to be expected. It's it's a SpongeBob PC game. Don't starve together. Uh, I never got to do that much. Don't starve together with someone else. I would really like to. I've always liked. Don't Starve when I saw it in videos and stuff. It just seems like such a fun game. But I also don't know how to play it well, really, and I don't remember if it teaches you that much. But I'll put it at A tier. Why not? It's a multiplayer game. It sucks that you have to buy a different game to play multiplayer, but still. Super Mario Galaxy A tier. It's Super Mario Galaxy. Why not? Super Mario Maker. I'll put you at high B tier. Super Paper Mario, easily A tier. Like, I, I struggled the last time I played it, but that's... That was probably my own fault for not really preparing, and also not being good at 2D platforming. Tales of Vesperia, that's a high A tier. The Binding of Isaac, a uh, rebirth. I'll put it at B tier. Cause like... The game has so many difficult requirements to unlock the content that... I kinda just wanna use cheats. I haven't, but I kinda just want to. Okay. The Escape is 2. Not as fun as I thought it would have been, but it is fun. I think this one also has multiplayer included, unlike the first one, maybe? I don't know. Zelda Twilight Princess, my favorite Zelda game. I'll put it at A. A totally accurate battle simulator, B tier. It is a very worthwhile game to grab if you can, but I'm not going to say that it's like an incredible game. <laughs> Undertale Yellow. I'm a little conflicted between S and A tier with this. Cause like, look, I know that I put- <laughs> I know that I put Neat Girl Date Night at S tier, but that game really resonates with me. Undertale Yellow is really good, I don't know if it really- really does it for me in the same way. I'll put it in S tier. Why not? It's a great game. Cookie Clickers. Cookie Clickers is unironically a pretty good game, and it's free, so why not? Undercards is a good game. At least... You know what, it probably still is a good game, but I, I just haven't adapted to all the changes, because there have been so many changes since I used to play. I'll put it at A tier. Valkyria Chronicle... I changed my mind, I'm putting it at high B tier. Because, like, I just remembered the pay-to-win elements. <laughs> Valkyria Chronicles 2. 
Yeah, you can have A tier. I like Valkyria Chronicles too. Better than one in like every way that I can remember. Uh, Viva Pinata, B tier. I don't have much to say about Viva Pinata. Wii Sports. Wii Sports easily gets A. Pokemon Yellow, C. Yokai Watch. Where'd I put Model or Yokai Watch 2? Oh, there it is. Yeah, I'll put you at B tier then. Yokai Watch is a good game. It's just not. Like, incredible? It's- it's good. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Duel Academy? Also good. I'll put that- I'll put that at B tier. It's a very good introductory Yu-Gi-Oh! game. Especially if you want to, like, learn the rules for you for Yu-Gi-Oh! It's a good game. Where's my water? An awesome mobile game, but I think they got rid of it. So that's really sad. I can't recommend it to people. Uh, Plants vs. Zombies 2. I never played the first one. I don't really want to because it doesn't look as good. Uh, there is actually a lot of content to this game. I'll put it at A rank. Where's my parry? Where's my parry? It's about the same as Where's My Water. They're both good. This game is so good. Mabinogi. This is like a... I think it's a Korean uh, MMORPG. And it's so good. Like, one of my friends just asked me if I wanted to play, on, play it, I think. No, wait, I think I asked them about it when they were talking about it. And I looked into it, and it's got so much stuff in it. Like, if you've ever seen in anime where it's like an RPG world and it seems so it seems so nonsensical how many mechanics are in the game there's all these random small little detail things like of uh, I've maxed out my cooking stat or <laughs> I've maxed out my carpentry Th Mabinogi has that kind of stuff there's like, your wood chopping skill, your carpentry skill, your carving skill, your cooking skill, uh, there's all that sort of stuff. And it also has really good mechanics on top of it, where it's like a, a reincarnation thing, where you get a reincarnate, it makes it easier to gain more skill points and stuff, and then you can also change, like, your role. Uh, I forget what they called it in the game, but it's like, you were able to reincarnate and go into a chef role so that you got better upgrades to your cooking stat. You you got a EXP for that faster. Or you could go into magic and stuff. And also, speaking of that, it's really fun to like just have all that stuff because for one, you can do bard magic and you can also write your own music for your instruments that you can play in the game. That's really fun. Uh, there was also like a button that let you switch between your gear that you had equipped, I think. So like one moment you could be holding your staff and then press a button and then you're using sword and shield. That's really cool. And uh, one thing that I really liked about it is that I had a build where I used uh, a sword and then an alchemy shield where it let you store up uh, materials for alchemy so that you can use alchemy with the shield instead of having to use a dedicated alchemy item. So that was really fun, just mixing up sword sword combat with something that's like kinda magical. And then my main weapon was, of course, a magic staff. Little Nightmares. I think I'll put Little Nightmares at B tier. It's a, it's a great game, but also, you know, you played it once, you played it once. <laughs> Adventure Time Card Wars. Uh, I think that I played both Card Wars, but I don't really remember the differences, because there were like two different versions. 
but then eventually they made it so that uh, both versions were free, I think? I'll put Card Wars at A. I really like card games. Yeah, this one's a web game. Uh, Mopio. Mopio. I am losing my voice. It's a, an IO game where you just play as a small animal. I don't know what they did to ruin it, but now the game runs terribly. But while it ran before, it run it ran pretty pretty well. I liked it. I think they made some changes to it though that I don't really like, but I'm going to ignore that. Uh, A tier. A Rapper the Rapper is a good game. Pocket Mortys. B tier. <laughs> Shell Shockers. Yeah, I'll, I'll put Shell Shockers at B tier. It's nothing special. It's it's a, a first person shooter with eggs. Ooh, Dipeo. Dipe Dipe IO. This is a really good game. Although, I believe this one also started to run terribly. I don't know what happened. Like every IO game just runs terribly now. And I don't know what happened to it. Temple Run. C. It's Temple Run. Angry Birds 2. D. I don't like the life system. I don't like the fact that you have to wait for your lives to replenish and stuff. I don't like the fact that there's a bunch of power-ups and everything that's shoved in your face. I don't like it. Agario. B tier. It was like the first IO game. It was fun. But... All the other ones were kind of just better after that point. Bad Piggies. Yeah, you can have A tier. Deep IO is good. This one, like all the other examples, now runs terribly and is basically unplayable. But when it ran, it was pretty good. A tier. So I don't think that I actually played this game, but I played a game like this and I couldn't remember the name, so I just used this image. Uh, I liked it a lot. It was just like one of those, one of those raise your monster kind of games, like Dragon City or whatever. And it was, uh, iOS exclusive. It was really fun. I liked it. I liked it better than I like most of those kind of games. I just don't remember the name. Fallout Shelter. B tier. It's alright. It's alright. Fallout Shelter is pretty alright. Alpaca Evolution. I, I don't... For those of you who haven't heard of this game... Good. <laughs> uh, I'll put it at C tier. Cartoon Wars. I remember this being pretty good. I should probably, like... I should re-download it because... Whenever I go somewhere and I don't have Wi-Fi, it would probably be a pretty fun game to play. Crossy Road. Crossy Road's a C tier. Neopets. I love Neopets. I have a lot of nostalgia for Neopets. But honestly, it deserves B tier. Because there's not much to do. Because whenever I go to play Neopets, I find myself just going to do the mini games for a bit of money and bartering with people that sell omelets. Oh, here's a good one. This is a survival craft. A Minecraft ripoff that was on, like, mobile stores or whatever. It's actually one of the better, the better ripoffs. I think I'll put it at B tier, honestly. Plague Inc. is awesome. Like, even, even the free mobile version. Plague Inc. is good. There's lots you can do. New Super Mario Bros. I'll put you at B tier. I B tier. I don't... I don't like Super Mario Bros, but new Super Mario Bros, it's just better. Ah, Kingdom Hearts 1. D tier. I don't like the gameplay. It controls, it controls very poorly. I've had people tell me that, that it's a skill issue, but the game controls very poorly. It's a very early PlayStation 2 game, and Square Enix was typically doing more, uh, you know, turn-based games. 
This was not a turn-based game. Viscera cleanup detail. I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh... Yeah, B tier. Like power wash simulator, I guess, but... You know, you don't power wash. You have to do a lot of meticulous cleaning. And you also don't... Uh, really get updated on how good you're doing. You kind of just have to make sure that you do it good. Just Shapes and Beats, I'll also put it at B tier. I'm not the biggest fan of either rhythm games or uh, bullet dodgy games, but Just Shapes and Beats is pretty good at both. CSGO. It's alright. It's CSGO. Jackbox Party Games? Uh, I just kind of lumped them all together because I don't remember what game is in which pack. And yeah, I'll put it at A tier. It's really good. Ooh. Okay, so this game does not have like an official logo or anything. So I just used a YouTube thumbnail. Uh, Pokemon Spork. It's a fan game. There's so much dedication to it. Uh, the person who made it is called like Ice Cream Sandwich. Sandwich is two different words, spelled like how you would imagine it would be if it was two different words. And, uh, yeah, she did a... She was not... Uh, she did not know how to make games when she started, but what she made is pretty good. There's lots of interactions across the world, and it's been updated a lot over time. There's also, like, some kind of side thing called... Delicious, delicious dream? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I'll put Pokemon Spork at A. Multiversus. B. Multiversus was like pretty fun. Then they, uh. Then they closed it. Nekopara Catboy Paradise. A tier. I don't need to elaborate further. Uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. A tier. Fire Emblem Three Houses is a great game. Uh, not as good as Fates. Not as good as Fates. What is that? I can't- Oh, that's Armored Core 3. Yeah, this is the only Armored Core game I played. And it's pretty fun. It's like, uh... Mech games are pretty cool. I'm not typically into mechs, but mech games are awesome. I like playing as a giant robot. Gunstar Heroes? Yeah, that gets an A tier. It's kind of like Kirby and the Crystal Shards, except instead of Kirby, you have a gun. <laughs> uh, you you get to pick up like powers, and you you use the gun with the powers, and you can combine two of them. There's not as many powers as there are copy abilities in Kirby, but it's still very fun. All the combinations are cool. Ah, Jack Smith from Cool Math Games. Yeah, I'll put you at B tier. It's basically a Papa's. A Papa, Papa Louie game, except uh, you make weapons. And speaking of Papa Louie games, Papa's Burgeria. Uh, Papa's Burgeria gets B tier, and so does Papa's Freezeria. But Papa's Donutaria, Donutaria. The, that's not that doesn't roll off the tongue. That gets an A tier. I like the donuts. They're they're so much more fun to make. Happy Wheels. Yeah, sure, I'll put Happy Wheels at A. Why not? Happy Wheels is fun. Run. I will put Run at C tier. And I will put Run 2 at B tier. Run 3 can be the top of B tier. Actually, you know what? Undercards, Undercards and Infamous do belong higher up than Run 3. I just gotta say. And while I am moving some of them to the top and or bottom of their lists, they're not really ordered by how much I like the game. Only some of them. To make a point. And here we have our last game. Super Fighters. Which, honestly, yeah, it deserves an A tier. Super Fighters is a good game. It's a... It's a good game. 
kind of like stick fight the game, but the physics are very different. Like, uh, there's fire explosions. If you catch on fire, you can roll around to get rid of it. Otherwise, you die. You can punch each other, uh, stun each other by doing that kind of stuff. There's melee weapons. You can use obstructions, or you can crush people with, like, barrels and stuff. And you can snipe each other, you can blow up barrels, you can blow up grenades. It's a very fun game. That is... Every... Every game that I can think of that I have played. And, yeah. Thank you to everybody for watching. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody.